True patriots who are willing to risk it all, to step into a fight, to turn words into actions, are very rare gems that God has gifted us all with to help remind us, to remind the people that there are still leaders who are willing to fight the good fight, who will challenge the status quo and fight for those God-given rights, life, liberty, and property. So it is my honor to introduce the next governor of Texas, Deborah Medina. Thank you all for coming out and for being here. I've sat at the back of the room this evening and listened to Sheriff Mack, and one word kept rolling through my mind. I um, interviewed with someone recently, and she said, tell me what you like to do, the things in your spare time. And I said, well, I don't have much of that, but I love the dictionary. <laughs> Words are powerful Things they convey special meaning and the word that was going through my mind tonight is exhort it's not a word that we use often in our diction today but diction is not a word we use often in our diction today either <laughs> <laughs> my children when they used those words were accused that those were homeschool words oh. <laughs> In our home, because their mother liked the dictionary, we had a lot of homeschool words. Exhort, to prod on, to do better things. And what a blessing to live in 2010 now, where we are exhorting one another, are we not? Yes. To fan the flame of liberty and freedom, to take that torch that the Thomas Jeffersons and the George Washingtons, but before that, that the Frederick Bastiats, some of you know that, or maybe before that, that the St. Augustines realized, as Natalie said, these are God-given liberties, and man cannot take them from us, and we will fight to keep them. We will fight a peaceful revolution and we will be victorious in our day or our children will bleed for what we have set on our behinds and let be squandered away. That's the fight that we're in, Texas. That's the fight we're in. I'm thrilled that you're here tonight. We styled this a state sovereignty symposium because if we're going to win this battle in a peaceful way, we have to exhort one another. We have to train up each other. We need the collective wisdom of man at the table restoring freedom. I had the privilege of being tutored by a gentleman from San Antonio over the course of the last couple of years as we have engaged in these bigger battles to protect the minority, read the Federalist Papers and the anti-federalist papers and understand why this republic was established. This is not a democracy. Every time I hear that, I just cringe. <laughs> we are established the way that we are to protect the rights of the minority while adhering to the will of the majority. It's part of what a republic does. And as we were having that discussion, he said to me, you know, Deborah, there is a privilege in that first Bill of Rights. There's a right there that we don't talk about in our society today. You all know the right to freedom of speech and press and religion, but we forget about assembly. He said to me, what was the purpose, do you think? Why did the founders put assembly in there? 
and I wasn't sure I knew, he submitted to me that it was to seek wisdom. Some of you that are Christian, that profess the Christian faith, will believe in the Holy Spirit and will know that that Spirit works among men. It is coming together that we seek and find wisdom. This flame of liberty has got to be fanned not just by Deborah Medina, but by every one of us in this room all across this state. We save our nation. We have freedom to offer again when we get that balance back. So while I'd like to be here to campaign as your governor, that time will come and go. I will win or lose that race. There will be another tomorrow in Texas. And what's way more important than this governor's race is that we get freedom and that we protect freedom. John Adams said, the revolution was in the minds and hearts of the people. A change in their religious sentiments, their duties and obligations. This radical change in the principles, opinions, sentiments, and affections of the people was the real American revolution. We better have a revolution in America today if we're going to put this republic back on the footing that the founders envisioned. If we're going to get back the freedom and prosperity that is ours, it's in our grasp if we would just reach out, fight for it, take it. We better look at ourselves in the mirror. I said this in April in Burleson at those first tea parties and ask, what's my government doing for me that I should be doing for myself? If we're going to claim individual liberty, we have to recognize that that is individual responsibility. I can't tell you how many times on the campaign trail people have come up to me and with the first sentence commended my campaign and with the second asked me how was my government going to fix this or that. And I have said time and time again, your government cannot help you with that problem. Government's job is to ensure justice, to make sure that the opportunity exists for all, to remind you that you are free to make wise choices and work hard and reap the benefit of your labor. You are likewise free to make other, maybe not so wise choices. <laughs> and to reap the consequences of those choices. When we recognize that as a people, when we have that radical change in principle, opinion, sentiment, and affection of the people that Adams talked about, we then and only then can begin to restore this constitutional republic. Another important reminder that I found in the study writing about the tragedy of Auschwitz. The spirit of liberty is the spirit which is not too sure that it is right when people believe they have absolute knowledge with no test in reality that is how they behave. Have we not seen that in our leadership have we not seen infallible royalty telling us that they know how to solve all of the problems that we face? And if we would but listen and do as we are told, we would experience prosperity. And instead, we are more enslaved today than we've been in our lifetimes, and I might dare say than most any have been in the United States of America. Our prosperity is stolen from us daily. I have been a political activist. It's funny, isn't it, when you read the papers, they tell you I'm a newcomer to politics. 
I just woke up yesterday and got involved in this. Um, no, no.